In this lesson, we'll look at three examples on how to calculate work. Let's begin with a quick definition. Work is defined as the force in the direction of a displacement times the displacement itself. And that can be summarized in this formula, where W is equal to F times S, and that's the generic symbol for displacement, being S. The units for work are in joules. So when you have force, that's in newtons, being multiplied to meters, you simply replace that with joules. In more complicated examples involving direction, work is defined as the dot product of the force vector times the displacement vector. And we'll look at examples involving that in questions two and three. Let's begin with the easiest example, where in question number one we're asked, calculate the work performed by a constant force of 60 newtons acting in the direction of a displacement of 3.0 meters. So in this example, the force is being exerted in the direction of the displacement. And for that, all we use is the formula where work is equal to 60 newtons times the displacement of 3.0 meters. 60 times 30 makes 180 joules, or newtons times meters. Let's do something that's a little more complicated. In question number two, calculate the work performed by a constant force of 40 newtons pushing a block a distance of 3.0 meters along the horizontal surface at an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal as shown. So we have a force that is 40 newtons and that's represented by this vector right here. What we need to do is find out the magnitude of that vector and multiply it by the displacement of 3.0. So if the magnitude of this vector is 40 newtons, we break that vector down into its components. And specifically, the one we're looking for is the x component. Because of course, every vector can be broken down into its x and y component. But in this case, we are pushing it along the horizontal. So it's the x component that we're concerned about. The expression for the x component is shown in this diagram. Now normally you would not see this on a diagram, but it's here for convenience. Let me show you how to derive it. Remember that if this were a right triangle, you see, if it were a right triangle and that's our reference angle, only cosine, the trigonometric function cosine, relates the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The adjacent here being what we're looking for. So we'll leave that unchanged as ADJ. The hypotenuse is given in the question. It's actually 40 newtons. That's the magnitude of that orange vector. So I will write this down as cosine 20 degrees is equal to ADJ over the hypotenuse of 40 newtons. Multiplying both sides by 40 gets rid of 40 at the bottom. And this is where this expression comes from. So 40 times cosine of 20, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, and we end up with 37.587. 37.587 newtons. What I like to do as well is not round until the very end of my question. So this is why I kept three digits after the decimal place. Now that we have the force along the horizontal, I'll multiply this by the displacement of 3.0. So multiplying this number by 3.0, let's use our calculator, 3.0 gives us 112.7. For simplicity, I'll just write down 113. So 113 newtons times meters, or simply joules. Okay, let's move on to the third and final question. Calculate the work done by the force of gravity acting on a 70 kilogram student sliding a 30 degree inclined slide with a slant distance of 10 meters. So let me show you what's happening. We have a slide and 30 degrees along the horizontal. The person that's sliding is represented by this circle and there is a force going directly down due to gravity. Let's calculate that. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, where the mass of this person is 70 kilograms and it's in the right unit. That's good. And the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Multiplying these two numbers out, you should get 686 newtons. What we're looking for is the force along this angled plane. And the only way we can find the force along this angled plane is if we break down this purple vector whose magnitude is 686, 
into its two components. This vector is one of its components, and the other component can be drawn like this, where if you add this red and blue vector together, you would end up at this point. Now, the next part involves a little bit of geometry. So if this is 30 degrees, and we were to momentarily extend this vector, just imagine we extended this vector all the way down, we would have a 90 degree angle. If that's 90, that's 30, then this has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so with that being said, if we're looking for the magnitude of this blue vector, then we have to use trigonometric functions, which was the approach that we used in question number two. So relative to 60 degrees, and using these two vectors, focusing in on these two, where I will create another 90 degree triangle right there, so focusing right here, relative to 60, this is the adjacent, and that's the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is related through cosine, where you have adjacent over hypotenuse. The angle we're using is 60, so cosine 60 is equal to the adjacent. We don't know what that is, that's what we're looking for, but we do know the hypotenuse, it's 686. So multiplying both sides by 686 to isolate for that part, let me show you really quickly, those two cancel out. So taking 686 and multiplying it by cosine 60, we get 343. Remember, work is defined as force times displacement. The force along this plane is again 343. Multiply it by 10 meters, which is the distance that this person travels we get 3,430 joules. So that concludes the first part of the series on how to calculate work. If you're looking for some more complicated examples, continue to watch along in the next few videos that I have prepared, and they should prepare you very well for this unit. Talk to you later.